we have lost sync within nature and we think that is our nature. Because the difference between what is you and what is the other comes down in the light, in the night, where there is no light, everything merges in our experience. Before you fall dead, is it not important? You experience this life in this fullest possible scale. We have developed a psychological structure which has got nothing to do with life. So, uh, there has been an awareness about making use of this possibility. Even if you're in deep sleep, you will come awake. If you go to bed at the right time, you don't have to look at your watch. How many times have you stayed awake past your bedtime? Some of you might have lost track of bedtime itself. During a talk, Sadhguru is asked whether it is all right to stay awake late at night. According to Sadhguru, let's check out who are the people who stay awake at night. My question to you is, I personally feel that I function more efficiently in the night than I do in the day. It's not oh, that I've changed oh. my biological clock or something and I sleep during the day, but it's just that I feel more productive, not only while studying, but otherwise. I feel invigorated at the night, so why is it so? Maybe Thank you're, you. Maybe you're in the wrong country, huh? <laughs> <laughs> There are three types of people who do not sleep in the night. A rogi will not sleep in the night. A rogi means a sick person because he cannot sleep. A bogi will not sleep in the night. A pleasure seeker will not sleep in the night because night is conducive for him, for his kind of business. A yogi also will not sleep in the night because for him also night is very conducive. Which one are you, you can decide, I don't want to say anything about it <laughs> Why night is? See, light, we value light because our visual apparatus are made in a certain way. What light does to you is, it makes everything distinct. See, now because it is lit, I can see this person, this person, this person, this person, this person. Suppose lights went off and if this became dark, I just see a mass of people. So there is a certain sense of lack of boundaries in the night. So for yoga, for sexuality, for friendship, for being together, for study, for focus, for all these things, night seems to be more conducive because the difference between what is you and what is the other comes down in the light… in the night simply because our visual apparatus function like this. Where there is no light, everything merges in our experience. So a yogi, a bogi and a rogi, all three of them make use of the night. You can also make use of it, there's no problem unless you're sleeping in the classroom. <laughs> if you're not sleeping in the classroom, it's fine, nothing wrong with it. I started practicing yoga at the age of twelve, in about maybe eight to nine months. After that, no matter where I am, even till this day, where I am, which time zone I am, every day I am in a different time zone, but at 3.35, 3.40, I just come awake because some changes happen in the nature at that time. I… my body just comes awake. If I want, I can get up and do what I want. If I don't want, I can sleep some more, but it always comes awake. So you have to bring some sensitivity into the system that, see, you are a product of this planet, yes or no? Whatever nonsense individuals may think about themselves, we are all a, just a pop-up from this planet. You seen those pop-ups on the computer screen? Pop, pop, yes? <laughs> You're just a pop-up, you'll be gone. You can't believe you will be gone, huh? Yes, all the very smart people, Countless number of people who walked this planet before and you and me, where the hell are they, huh? Not a sign, all became topsoil, isn't it so? You may think you have a great life and this and that, as far as the earth is concerned, it's just recycling its soil. Just throws you up and draws you back, throws you up and draws you back. So in this little pop-up, 
The important thing and the most important thing is, you create sensitivity within you, such sensitivity that every dimension of life comes into your experience. Before you fall dead, is it not important? You experience this life in this fullest possible scale, yes or no? Experience means people think we must party every day. There is much more for the human life to explore. You must become sensitive. When I say sensitive, because the word sensitive is used in a wrong way in the sense, when people say, oh, she is very sensitive, we are supposed to understand uh, she will get hurt for just about anything. Yes? No, being sensitive to life and being ego-sensitive are two different things. Being sensitive to life means if you walk into this hall, you experience everything that's here, you don't miss a thing. If you walk outside, you don't miss a thing, every dimension of life should come into your experience. This happened. Shankar and Pillai bought a work… Uh, what? He bought a work donkey. And the man who was selling the donkey said, see this is a very sensitive donkey. You cannot beat this donkey. You cannot use bad words, you cannot abuse this donkey. Shankaram Pillai said, that's great. Every day I'm tired of beating these donkeys and abusing every day. I have to use filthy words to get these donkeys moving. I like a sensitive donkey and he played li paid little extra bonus for the sensitivity of the donkey and took it home. He left it in his… in the barn and tomorrow morning he has to go to work. He went there and told the donkey, please let's go. No response. He said, please, let us go. Nothing. He went down on his knees and prayed, nothing. You're not supposed to abuse it, you're not supposed to beat it. Not knowing what to do, he went back to the man who sold the donkey. See, I pr I… I requested, I pleaded, I prayed, he's not responding, what am I supposed to do? That man said, is that so, let me see, and he came. He picked up a thick stick like this, one whack on the head, and then he threw the stick and said, come. The donkey followed. Shankar and Bilai got furious, you idiot, you said it's a sensitive donkey, and the way you hit this animal, I've never hit an animal like this in my life. He said, no, 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 he's very sensitive, first you have to get his attention. <laughs> so, developing sensitivity means, if you simply close your eyes, uh, you must know what face of moon it is right now, because all this is playing in your body. Every day it is playing in your system. Do you see if it's a full moon or a new moon, the entire ocean is coming up? There are tides, isn't it? The whole ocean is trying to rise. Seventy-two percent of your body is water. You think nothing is rising? It is. For every position of the sun, moon and many things that are happening to the planet, they're happening to you. You must become life sensitive. Then you will know how to manage every aspect of your life. Don't become ego sensitive, don't become society sensitive. Life sensitive if you become. What's happening this, this, with this life if you know this one thing all the time? You will see, you got your GPS on, there's really no problem, you will never get lost. It doesn't matter who says what, what kind of situations you're put into, you are never ever lost because you're life sensitive. This is all this life needs, that this has to become life sensitive. Right now we have developed a psychological structure which has got nothing to do with life, it's got something to do with the social scene got nothing to do with the life. It's up to each one of us to make a choice of whether staying awake late at night is worth missing out on all the things around us. In another talk, Sadhguru explains why we should wake up at a certain time and how it can benefit us. See if you can wake up at that time. In the way the planet is spinning and what is happening, something very fundamental changes somewhere between 320 to 340. This is called Brahma Mahurtam. This is relevant only up to 33 degrees latitude. Your system, human system, functions in a certain way. 
it is a possibility. So, uh, there has been an awareness about making use of this possibility. Your life is a product of many things that we call as the universe, many things that we call as existence. So, we are a consequence of a certain phenomenal happening that we call as cosmos. We are not an individual existence. So, when you get in sync, certain things will happen. You know, there's a <coughs> cicadius in uh, where we are in Tennessee, the U.S. ashram, they wake up once in seventeen years. Can you beat it? They know it is seventeen years and they come awake and they breathe and they go back to sleep. They're keeping time once in seventeen years, no alarm bell anywhere. Well, how is this? I'm saying they're in sync with nature. We have lost sync within nature and we think that is our nature. No. All the many ailments, many problems that human beings are suffering is simply because we have lost that awareness as to how to be in sync with the many forces which are making us who we are. So yoga is to bring that sync so that you are in rhythm with life. If you become in rhythm with life, you will also wake up somewhere just after three a.m. If you're conscious, suddenly a certain spark of aliveness will happen within you. Even if you're in deep sleep, you will come awake. This must happen to you. This means you're falling in sync with it. You're falling in sync with life. So what should I do? You must do a process for which you have been initiated for. Because initiation means you were not just taught a practice, it was introduced into your system, it was implanted in your system. So whatever, if there is a life seed within you, if you are awake at Brahma Mahartam and sit for whatever that practice is, it bears maximum fruit because of the way the planet is behaving in relation to your system. If you become aware in a certain way, a certain level of awareness is achieved within you, you will see, you will simply know when that time is. If you go to bed at the right time, you don't have to look at your watch. You will always know when it is 3.40 because the body will behave in a different way. At that time, if you sit up and do whatever process you have been initiated for, not what you picked up from a book, it will bear maximum fruit the seed will get the necessary support at that time for it to sprout or spurt up more rapidly than, you, and than at other times. This is only for the initiated. If you are not initiated, you are a book yogi, then 3.40, 6.40, 7.40, not so much of a difference. Sandhya colors are more important for such people. Sandhya means twenty minutes before sunrise, twenty minutes after sunrise, or twenty minutes before sunset and twenty minutes after sunset. The same goes for noon and midnight, but they are of a different nature. So these two twilights are better for the uninitiated. 3.40 is good for those who have been powerfully initiated. These are very simple and basic concepts that we have forgotten and we have gotten off track. Are you willing to experience the world as it is? It is never too late to start the process. Click on the video shown to see more from us. What would you like to see in the next video? 
Share your thoughts and reasons you stay awake late at night in the comments section. Like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching.